is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. This is a new day to live your life. This is a new day to try to get right. This is a new day to get on track. Yeah, that's life in football. It's life in football. We are life in football. You are now listening to the Life in Football podcast. Check out the new website, lifeinfootball.com. Once again, the website is lifeinfootball.com. Thanks for listening. Welcome to the Life in Football podcast, baby. I'm your host, Mike Fee. And this is your coach, Colin Moore. You know we love and life and enjoying football. Top-notch coaches all around the world. Top, top-notch coaches all around the world. Today, we got Coach Lou on, baby, from the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Now, he go, his real name is Louis Corella, but he's a top-notch athletic coach that's going to put you to the pretty much, let me, let me tell you, he's going to take you levels. He's going to take you out of space and beyond. He's currently the head strength coach at Georgia Tech and he put in his work man coming all the way born and raised coming straight out of Tarpon Springs Florida not only is he a strength coach he's a husband a father but he put in his work y'all let me just give y'all a little breakdown of some of the resume that I caught up on and he was an intern at USL intern Virginia Grad assistant, Mississippi State. Now, y'all, that's a total pretty much of four years, or close to four years, putting in work at the bottom level. And then he went on to, you know, had a, split, a stint at Georgia Tech, another stint at Mississippi State, Michigan, North Texas, Louisiana, Lafayette, Buffalo, and now he's at Georgia Tech again. Man, this is a guy who I'm pretty much he paid his dues like my coach, my high school coach used to say. He put in his work and he put in his time and now he got the shine for his grind. And I saw some film too, y'all. Not only is he a great head strength coach, but he was a pretty decent running back too now. I saw some film on him that I really like. He was a hard nosed runner too. But without further ado, I'm going to quit running my mouth and let Simo bring him on. How you doing, Coach? Uh, doing great. You guys fired me up, so I'm excited. Hey, it's a blessing to have you on too, man. Coach, I want to get right to it. Like, when did you know that you wanted to be in football and then you actually wanted to be a strength coach? Like, Because some players, like me and Mike, we was former players. I didn't know what I wanted to do for years. and it seemed like you came out and was rolling. So when did you actually know that football, you knew football was a part of your life? Yeah, so football, like you said, since I was seven years old, I was playing full pads football. So I, I was obsessed with the game. I I worshipped Barry Sanders my whole life. I, I even wore number 20 as a quarterback um, just because of Barry Sanders. So I, I really tried to always juke everyone in my neighborhood every day and on the field and all that. So I, I was obsessed with uh, making plays, you know, but as I got older and got into college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do my first two years. So I just started thinking and one of my guys that used to train me in high school, he said, Hey, I can, I can get you an internship at South Florida with their strength program. And at that point I had no idea that was even a profession. So I was nervous and I was like, Oh man, well, why would they want to listen to a, a guy like me? And um, that's how I thought of it. So, but I went in there blinded, un, unintentionally, not knowing what was going to come from it. And man, I loved it. But the coach that was there at the time let me train with the players because he knew I was still going back to school to play. So that summer I was training with the USF Bulls and also coaching them. And then uh, that following summer, I, I knew this is what I wanted to do. So I was fired up after that. Man, that's a blessing, Coach. Like just how I just played out like that. Then on top of that, it seemed like another blessing just fell right into your lap the way God had it planned because you and Coach Collins met before at Mississippi State. So how did that come about? 
Yeah. So it's funny how things work, but you never, that's why you never burn a bridge. You never uh, lose touch with people, no matter how, uh, you know, whatever happens, you can't burn bridges in this field that you're in. So um, coach Collins was the D coordinator when I was an assistant at Mississippi state and we didn't really get to talk that much. We, we knew each other and respected each other, but man, almost 10 years later, he called me to be his head guy at Georgia tech. So it, uh, <laughs> you never know who you're going to meet and you never know what the purpose of those people are at the moment, but you try to be a good person and, and always set a good example for the people you're around and you just never know. Coach, if you could, Give us your background, how it was for you growing up, and who helped you to become the person that you are today? Uh, so, obviously, my parents helped me a lot with just trying to keep me out of trouble. You know, I wasn't the greatest kid growing up. Um, not proud of a lot of things, but I learned from a lot of my mistakes, and I got out of the crowd that I was with to uh, really set myself on the right track after moving away from home to go to college. And then I met the right girl. And of course, that's my wife now. And I was 19 when I met her. So from my 19 year old, uh, my, my 19 year old self, I, I was kind of on one track since then that strength and conditioning is going to be my career. It doesn't matter what it takes, but I also have a, blo a lot of mentors that I really look up to still to this day that are in strength and conditioning. Like the guy I worked for at South Florida, he is my mentor, Ron McKeefrey. The guy I worked for at Virginia is my mentor. And Matt Bayless, he's now the head guy at Notre Dame. And, you know, my other main mentor is the guy I worked for at Michigan for three years. He is now the head guy at Indiana, but he was the head guy for the Giants and so on. So I, I always, they're like my North Stars in this field. Whenever I have questions or I get concerned about things, I just call them and fall back on them. Coach, I want to know how you end up going to um, Defiance, or uh, I, th I think I'm saying that right, as to play college ball. Like, um, because I saw that film, you was you was running that. Like I say, you were running that ball like a <laughs> like a maniac through the hole. So, <laughs> like coming out of high school, did you have any other choices, or what ended up being the deciding factor for you to choose that school to go? So it was it was pretty limited for me because I, I played quarterback my senior year in high school and we ran the option. So I didn't have any other film my junior year. And that's normally when you get recruited pretty heavy. So recruiting then was way different too. You didn't have huddle accounts in 04. You didn't have all this stuff. I mean, if you were a quarterback that was five, eight, one eighty, uh, not a lot of people are going to come after you. So I was, I was in that boat, you know, I still wanted to play quarterback and, a lot of D2 and D3 schools came down to like some recruiting fair that my high school coach took me to and about 20 different D2 and D3 schools wanted to talk to me. And I, I thought it was awesome. You know, I didn't know any better. So I, I chose West Virginia Wesleyan at first, went there for two and a half years. And then I transferred to defiance because uh, it was another coach I met at that fair that I really liked. Now coach, with you being at Georgia tech right there in Atlanta and, man, you on social media, and I love what you're doing. You're always motivating. You're always encouraging. So I know your players probably love it, probably come down there just to talk to you like, Coach, man, I'm, in, I'm thinking about this. What you think about that? Because you're so motivating. So how do the players feel about the um, motivation that you give? Because I know it's the, the energy that you give. It, it make you want to come down there and talk to you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um. So that's my main goal. You know, every kid I've ever coached, I've interviewed first. You know, I don't want to I don't want to I don't want them to feel like I'm just some guy that's that's here because I have this job. You know, I, I'm i genuinely here for these kids because when I was a player, I went through a lot, too. And I didn't really have many coaches to talk to that I could trust. So I really love the thought of being there for the kids, but also getting them to open up. You know, I, these interview questions I give them. It's like 25 different questions about their life. And they, op I mean, sometimes you, you ask the simplest question and get the deepest answer because they never get to talk there. It's always scrolling the phone or whatever, but the door is always open. I love the interview before I even get going with the kid, no matter what freshman comes in, no matter if I'm the new guy and I got to interview the whole team. Uh, that's, that's how I get on the right track with the guys. And then after that, the relationships kind of last forever. So, 
Uh, but the weight room is, is, in my opinion, your biggest opportunity as a coach to make your whole program tick. Like I'm, I'm the culture guy and I have to make sure the whole heartbeat's beating every day. So if the kids dread coming back to the weight room, that's my fault. You know, I got to make that thing creative. I got to be exciting. Uh, and then this third year I've been here, it was almost the opposite. I didn't have to do as much and the players kind of took it over and they were the ones bringing the energy and they were the ones being creative. And it was a, it was a blast. I had so much fun this off season. And about somebody told you, Hey, go down there to South Florida and check out the job. And they're probably, you know, you might have a chance. And then that actually became your career. Like what was the chances of that? The, the chance, being where I'm at right now because of an internship. Right. It's just, it wasn't, I never thought I, I, of course, when you're there and you look at the head guy that you're working for, you're like, geez, man, amazing job. But I was like intimidated by that. So I didn't, I didn't know if that could ever be me. I, I thought it would be awesome if it, it would, but um, it's just those little steps, man. You can't overstep anything. You can't go past, you can't like that. Those internships that I worked for no money, nothing were the most valuable things I did because I made the relationships that lasted to today. And they, they still helped me like that guy, that guy that I worked for at South Florida six years later, got me a head, my first head job at North Texas because he turned it down and didn't want it and said, Hey, the next best guy is him. So it was just the, the not no. It, like I tell the guys, like a champion sprints when the distance is unknown. You know, you just don't know, but you believe. And that's the point. I think I believed that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Coach, now I got to be honest with you. Man, and I'm going to give a little breakdown for everybody out there who may not understand what it is like to have a strength coach in college. The strength coach is almost a heartbeat of the, of the team, honestly, y'all. You spend a, almost majority of your time with the strength. This is a person you see almost every day. I'm talking about even in practice, the weight room. Sometimes you have morning workouts. And it's a, a, a special relationship and a special bond at the end. Now, coming in as a freshman, I got to be honest, you be intimidated and you kind of hate this person. Like, oh my goodness. And my I remember my strength coach when I was at Alabama State, he would be so enthused coming in in the morning. I'm talking about this. Y'all listen, this used to be five o'clock, five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. He running around screaming, yelling, the music playing. We could barely hear what he's saying. He talking about put more weight on the arm um, bar. And I'm thinking, hey, uh, this is it. I can't put no more. But for some reason, <laughs> I will lift it. And I just want to know from you, like, is that a training school for head uh, strength coaches? Or where do y'all get this enthusiasm? Because I saw some film on YouTube running around, yelling, screaming, and you getting the boys hyped up. Like, where do this enthusiasm come from and its determination to help guys, you know, continue to grow? Yeah. So I, no, there's no training for it, but there, <laughs> when you're an assistant and you're a, a GA and you're an intern, you kind of take notes on the guys that you're working for. So I think we're all just a piece of someone that, you know, we admire. And, and that's, I've, I've kind of taken what I've learned from the, my mentors and, and then I've also found myself in that. So I, I think honestly, the, if you don't have fire in your own heart, you're not going to create fire in anyone else's. And yeah, like sometimes people are like, oh yeah, strength coaches are rah-rah guys. But that is true for some of them. I'm not going to lie. But the way I look at it is if I'm not getting these kids excited, I'm not opening their gift for them every day. And they don't open it on their own. Sometimes they walk right by their gift all the time. They got so much talent. It's just, it takes someone like a strength coach to be a firelighter in their life and let them see their own potential and wake them up. So, you know, I, I have so many different ways to do that, that I've done over the years with creative lifts, theme lifts, uh, different, different ways that 
I, I move the groups around and shock them. You know, I, I try to keep them guessing all the time. So they are naturally excited. But as far as the tone setter, yeah, the strength coach is definitely that because sometimes you don't know what you're capable of until someone wakes you up. Coach, lastly, if you could just give us some information that could help younger kids out there and, you know, kind of let them know, hey, not not just about no Georgia Tech stuff, just, hey, continue to work hard or whatever information that you could pass on that could be helpful to any younger athlete who want to inspire to be a Division One athlete one day or any college football player. Yeah, so um, I think the people you hang around with is probably the most important when you're young. Uh, if you got the wrong crowd, man, you're not going too far. I can promise you that. And if you don't break away soon, it, you're going to be disappointed and have a life full of regret. So uh, one of the best things I did growing up was was get away. You know, I, I, I found a way to get out of that mess. So um, that would be my number one thing. And then also don't don't settle. You know, like if you believe something, if you believe you're supposed to be doing something, don't settle for anything less than you deserve. You know, you might not get your way a couple times. That's fine. You still got to believe in what you're worth. You still got to believe in what you're doing. So I would just say work as hard as you can when no one's watching. That's the biggest part. Like everyone, everyone can work when it's a mandatory workout. But are you the guy that's going to go to an open field when you don't have to be there, put your cleats on, and watch your potential grow from there? Because that those are my favorite days. When I go to the stadium in the pitch dark, and I run, and I run the steps, and I run the field. And I'm not even training for anything anymore. But that's just who I am now. It's, it's what I love. I love that feeling of just working. And, it, and then I set myself up for the whole day. So I, no one can bother me. I got mine in. Um, I would just say do uncommon work that a lot of people aren't willing to do. Y'all heard it right here, man. That's Coach Lou, Louis Corella. And he's the Georgia Tech head strength coach. Young players, listen to me. The strength coach is very important. Build that relationship early with them because they're going to help you out in the long run. I don't know what it is about the strength coach. All I, I guarantee you, anybody who I played with on my college team, we all had a special relationship with the strength coach. At times, we hated them, and majority of the times, we loved them. Only time we hated them because we might have to go run some stairs one day because we, you know, being lackluster, as they say, in some of the work eyes or, you know, they just pushing us to a certain level, and they just trying to get you better, honestly. And I just want everybody to know this job that, Coach Lou has is a special job. He's doing a great thing for young guys. And he, like Simo said, the information that he's putting out in his social media tells a lot about a man and his character because he's giving out the good information, not just to his own players, but to everybody. And I want to thank him for that. And I want to thank every strength coach out there in the nation. Thank y'all for the great job y'all doing. And I'm going to leave y'all how I always leave y'all. Keep your head up and not down or else you'll fall to the ground. This is the Life and Football Podcast. Catch you next time. You are now listening to the Life and Football Podcast. Check out the new website, lifeandfootball.com. Once again, the website is lifeandfootball.com. Thanks for listening. Press, press, press.
I try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football This is a new day to live your life This is a new day to try to get right This is a new day to get on track Yeah, that's life in football It's life in football We are life in football